Good afternoon. Today what I want to talk about is I got a request for um, a discussion about butter and margarine. So we want to talk about that, but I also want to invite uh, Perry Stevens. Now, Perry, I'm just getting her on, on, I believe, so just hang on. Now, I wanted to bring, there she is. Hi. There she is. Good. I want to turn up my volume. Excellent. So um, I wanted to um, invite Perry Stevens and introduce you to her because uh, she is a nutrition coach that's going to be checking in on our Healthy Secrets page. Oh my gosh. There we go. Um, so welcome, Perry. Hey, hey. Tell us a little bit about yourself because uh, we haven't introduced you. We've introduced you to the Shauna 24-7 crowd, mm -hmm. but tell us a little bit about yourself and uh, I'll just be easier for you probably. Okay. Well, I, hi, I'm Perry Stevens and I am a nutrition coach. Um, and in addition to that, I'm a mom. Um, I also, you know, uh, work as a sales uh, professional on the side as well. And I travel quite a bit. Um, so I got a lot of balls that I juggle, but uh, nutrition is definitely one of my passions. So love working with my clients. Right. So uh, just a little background because um, Perry's not going to brag or anything, and I will. Um, you know, you, you are a busy mom. You travel. You um, always manage to fit in your workouts and healthy eating. And can you remind us your age? Do you mind... Oh yeah, no, I'm 40 still. Exactly. <laughs> yes. So she fits right in with us. And so, um, as you know, on this page of healthy secrets for, um, women 40 plus, you know, we're, we're getting it right. Like we're not talking to a 20 year old, you know, we we're talking to a busy mom who has a nutrition coaching business. She travels and you know, she's a mom and does all the mom things that, everybody on the page does. So uh, uh, trained through Precision Nutrition, which is a very prestigious, um, you know, nutrition certification. So I'm just so happy to bring you onto the page. And I thought, you know what, what a bet, what a, you know, great way to introduce you uh, with a question that uh, my client, Diane, asked. She said, you know, I'd really like to have a discussion about butter and margarine. I thought, you know what, let's bring Perry on and get you to weigh in on it. Cause I know that we've talked a little bit about this and um, let's get, you know, let's you talk about it and, and uh, let's see where it goes. So what do you think Perry? Okay. So yes, I definitely have my opinions about butter versus margarine. So before I go into them, I want to just define like what each of them, you know, are. So butter is just basically milk fat that you get, you know, from dairy milk and that they churn it and they make it into butter. Um, Martrin is actually made in a lab and it was originally made, I think back in the 1970s, honestly, just to keep plant oils. So, you know, you have all these different like vegetable oils that you use in cooking from going rancid. So they wanted to just try to get it in a solid form so it would last a little bit longer. So that's kind of the origin and, you know, what makes up the two. So one's a little bit more natural because it comes from cows. And then the other one is, um, you know, made chemically, I guess, in a laboratory using vegetable oils. Um, yeah. And one of the reasons I think that margarine, uh, other than, in, you know, increasing shelf life, was a big fair, uh, scare about saturated fat and cholesterol, mm -hmm. right? Right. Yeah. I think, you know, up until recently... You know, there was a big scare, you know, if you do consume saturated fats, you know, that would contribute to higher cholesterol and, you know, your um, arteries clogging up and, and bad things. But actually, there's been two big studies from, I think one was done in 2010 and the other one was done in 2014 with thousands of patients in there that really looked at saturated fat and, you know, whether or not it was harmful um, for heart health. And it actually sh showed that it was not that you could actually, you know, have saturated fat in your diet and it was actually, you know, could be considered fairly healthy. Um, so there were some benefits for actually having some saturated fat in your diet. And there's a genetic link between high cholesterol. Like some people have high cholesterol that are, you know, not overweight or, you know, they, they don't have, they don't have, 
you know, it's not diet related mm -hmm. necessarily. They just have a genetic disposition to high cholesterol that's unrelated to, to their nutrition. Right. Correct. And then let's talk about um, margarine and the fact that, okay, it's supposed to be better for cholesterol, but tell us about, you know, how that plays out. Yes. Well, I mean, I think up until recently, um, margarine did have a lot of trans fat in there. Um, and I think now it's illegal to have trans fat. So they may have taken that out. And I mean, I'm not super knowledgeable of, of, of all the things that have changed. But historically, because of the trans fat being in there, um, it's actually the worst fat you could possibly consume. Um, you know, because it is processed. Um, it, it was shown actually to, if you look at your cholesterol, you know, you've got your good cholesterol, which is the HDL, and then you have your bad cholesterol, which is the LDL. And so you want to obviously keep the LDL low while increasing the HDL. And what margarine did, as well as other trans fats, was reverse it. So it actually had negative effect on the body. Um, so that's what they so, found. So not only did it raise your LDL, which is bad cholesterol, it lowered the HDL, which is the good cholesterol. So mm -hmm. in an effort to be more health, heart, heart healthy, it was like a double whammy of bad. Correct. Yep. So, and then the other thing about, you know, like about the man-made stuff mm -hmm. is that I always, you know, the reading that I've done, and, and maybe you can weigh in on this, is that when you're, when you ingest something that the body's kind of like, mm, I'm not really sure about that, mm -hmm. it's going to just surround whatever that food article or whatever, it just causes inflammation. Mm -hmm. Right. And so, so you're going to experience some inflammation. It might hinder weight loss. Mm -hmm. Any other thoughts on that? Yeah. I mean, the, also the other thing to consider too, is, you know, the more processed food that you eat, you know, the less thermal effect you get from the food. So what I mean, thermal effect of food is, you know, if you eat clean, like whole sources, plants, you know, animals, your body will actually burn calories to digest it. Versus when you look at a very processed food, body is not very metabolically, you know, active and it's not going to break it down as easily um, or expend as much, I guess, calories and, to break it down. So, yeah, exactly. So, so I feel like your bias is showing and mine is too. So should we just get the spoon out and start eating butter by the spoonful? Absolutely not, not because if you look at the amount of calories per gram, it is a fat, so it is going to be nine calories per gram. Um, and so, if you put a ton of butter on everything, you're still going to get all those extra calories, which obviously is not very good for the waistline. So, right. So it's just like a healthy balance. But I, I agree with you that I would rather be having something more natural and less processed but still we need to be eating that in moderation. Correct, yes. So, the, I know that it's big, the whole keto idea that, you know, we're just gonna have bacon and butter wrapped in, you know, everything bacon wrapped in butter soaked. Mm -hmm. How do you feel about just a straight old keto diet? Oh, and maybe just explain what the keto diet is. Yes, so keto or ketogenic diet is essentially cutting out all carbs where you have very minimal, and we're talking very minimal, I think it was like less than 15 or 20 grams. 20 grams a day. Yeah. Um, so you're cutting out a whole macronutrient out of your diet. So it is an extreme diet. You know, with diets, it does work um, up to a point. Um, so, you know, I think it does work for the short term, but it's just really tough to maintain this particular diet because you cannot have carbohydrates. Um, and it usually takes when you first start a ketogenic diet about two to three weeks to get in what is called ketosis, where the body is burning ketones, which are your it's fat different. sources versus the glucose from the carbs. So you go through all these side effects, like they call it the keto flu, you know, just so your body is adjusting. Um, and then the moment you have a little bit too many carbs, your body goes right out of ketosis. And then you have to start that whole process over again to get back in there. So um, it's very extreme, <laughs> um, not very easily sustainable, in my opinion. Exactly. And, you know, we were talking earlier, um, Perry, that the best diet is the one that works. Yes. So for some people, if that, if that form of eating works for them, it's fine. 
because the fact is, is even on a keto diet, which is low carb, you can still be eating a, a, a volume, voluminous amounts of vegetables because vegetables are low carb. Mm -hmm. But, you know, I, um, I had, for example, a half a head of cauliflower yesterday for dinner, and that was only 14 grams of carbs. So I had a heaping, you know, um, plate full of uh, cauliflower. So it's like you can get the fiber, mm -hmm. but, you know, if I wanted to have like a potato or, you know, anything with higher carbs, like 20 grams of carbs in an entire day is very low. So it is yes. difficult to sustain. So um, I'm not in favor, like for myself, I have tried the keto diet. Um, I tried it when it was called the Atkins, which is really the same thing. Like it's just been reskinned because there's nothing new under the sun, but it was basically the Atkins diet, which is a ketogenic diet. And I felt dumber than a stump. Yeah, <laughs> it's because your brain needs um, carbohydrates to function. And so if you're burning ketones, your, your brain will still function, but it takes a little bit of time, like your body has to get through the process of changing the like, switching over to ketosis. And for me, I just it was just like the keto flu. That's how I felt. Yeah, I tried it a little bit. So Oh, sorry. <laughs> I was just gonna yeah. say I tried it for a little bit as well. And I, I felt the same um, type of side effect as far as you know, brain function. But the other thing is, you know, I am very active. Um, yeah. And so my workouts just just were became non existent, because I didn't have the energy to push myself through, even though supposedly right. it taps into the fat sources. I don't, I don't know, I, I just like my carbs. <laughs> right. And recently, um, I you know, I, I'm one of those people that was a little bit afraid of eating too many carbs. Mm -hmm. So I found that I was eating a little bit more heavier on the fat, protein, and, you know, low glycemic carbs. And then when I switched it over to a little bit lower fat and a little bit higher carbohydrate, I had better energy for my workouts. Mm -hmm. And it took, it was it over the course of a year though, I lost six pounds, but I didn't mean to. I was really just looking for more energy. Mm -hmm. So my message today to the Healthy Secrets and women and to the people watching is just that, um, you know, you have to find what's right for you. And, and I'm not saying the keto diet is bad because for some people it might be fine, but I don't feel it's sustainable long term. That's probably the message you're probably singing over there. Yes, yes. And then I, I do see a difference too also um, with my men or male clients and female clients. It seems like for men, it tends to work a little bit better longer term. You know, I think um, what research has shown for females is um, with doing the ketogenic diet, it will actually affect your hormone leptin um, after yeah. a long period of time. And so what leptin is, for those of you who may not know, it's just a, it's a fat burning hormone that we have. Um, and unfortunately, when you research has shown, if you're on keto for a while, leptin will not be as high. And so, yeah, it drops and then your metabolism drops as well. And so it kind of stops the, uh, the effects that it's, you know, you're supposed to be getting through keto. Right. And I mean, that's why in usually in my nutrition plans is I suggest doing like a treat meal because even because up to, um, 50% of your leptin levels can be dropping after seven days of uh, dieting. So mm -hmm. every seven days, if you have a little treat meal, you can boost your leptin levels, which will boost your fat burning effect. But if you're on a keto diet, yeah. it's hard to maintain ketosis, you know, when, so there's, I mean, there's lots of things to think about. So, I mean, we just want, I just wanted to talk a little bit about keto because I know that it's very popular. Um, everybody's looking for a magic bullet, but I don't think there's anything new under the sun. And so it's important to kind of talk about those things. And I mean, we really just started talking about it with butter and margarine. And so I think um, you and I are in agreement that we would prefer butter in its more natural form than margarine which is more processed i need to go yell at the dog but i can't really in a facebook live he's getting away with barking um and that uh i'm all for a little bit more balanced 
macro where we don't entirely cut out a macronutrient. So, so thank you for weighing in with your facts. Um, Perry, we're going to see you a lot more on the page. And for those of you that are, um, you know, we'll have some options to uh, work a little more cl closely with um, Perry and I coming up. Well, that's exciting, and we're going to be revealing that shortly. So thank you again for um, presenting today on the whole keto argument and the margarine butter debate. I'm going to go have me some butter. No, I'm not. I'm <laughs> Big shot of having me on. Okay, awesome. Thanks, Perry. Bye. Bye.